everyone. Today we will be talking about the analytic hierarchy process and we will study one example to have a better comprehension about what this method is and how is it applied. Imagine a situation where I just finished my MBA and I'm now a stronger candidate to seek for different job opportunities. So I ask myself, which is the best job for me? How could I comprehensively and objectively analyze the different job opportunities that I have? Well, back in 1980, Professor Sati, who is a PhD in mathematics from Yale University and now teaches business analytics and operations at the Joseph M. Katz Graduate School of Business in the University of Pittsburgh, elaborated the analytic hierarchy process based on psychological and mathematical principles. This work is well recognized and the original piece, published in 1980, was later translated into several languages. Professor Sati's work has been cited more than 70,000 times by other researchers. With AHP, he proposes a general theory of measurement that can combine tangible and intangible objects to derive ratio scales from pair comparisons that later allows easier analysis to face decision-making problems. One of the things that, that has attracted the interest of many researchers is the nice mathematical properties and the fact that the required input of data is easy to obtain. One of the key properties of AHP is the use of pairwise comparisons. In fact, psychological experiments have shown that individuals cannot simultaneously compare more than seven objects. Some individuals will reach the limit at five, and some individuals would uh, reach their limit at nine. This is what makes AHP comparisons so powerful, because one is able to decompose a problem in a set of pairwise comparisons to make easier judgments among two variables. These comparisons determine the relative importance of each alternative and allows the comparison of the conversion of qualitative data into absolute values using an established scale. When making the comparison, one will firstly select which alternative has higher importance based on a specific criteria, and secondly, will select the intensity of that importance based on AHP scales, going from 1 to 9 where 1 means equal importance and 9 means absolute importance, as you can see in this chart here. To implement AHP, one has to follow a simple process. The first step is defining the problem and the structure of the decision hierarchy. The second step is constructing the set of pairwise comparison matrices. And the third step is to compute and analyze the results. So, let's go back to our original problem, which is the best job alternative for me. And let's construct our decision model hierarchy, which is the first step of the process. Here, the problem is placed on the top of the hierarchy. Then, the criteria that has to be considered to make the decision is placed on the second level. And the possible alternatives that solve the problem are later placed in the third level of the hierarchy. In our case, to select the best job, we will, we will consider flexibility, opportunity, reputation, and salary as the criteria. And the job alternatives for me as an MBA professional are a local bank, a local digital agency, and a global company. As you remember, the second step of the process is to construct the pairwise comparisons and their matrices. To do this, we first have to know how many matrices are needed. To define the number, you have to know that there is always a need to construct one matrix for the criteria. Later, given the structure of our problem, where the three alternatives have to be analyzed under each criteria, we will need to construct four more matrices, which makes a total of five matrices. Next, we need to define the number of comparisons in each matrix. So we will apply this formula, where n represents the number of variables in each matrix. For example, there are four criteria, which after applying the formula will make a total of six comparisons. The next matrix, which is comparisons of the alternatives under the criteria of flexibility, is made of three alternatives. So after applying the formula, there will be three comparisons required. At the end, there is a total of 18 comparisons in our model, distributed among the five matrices. 
Then, we construct the pairwise comparisons instrument. In this case, we have this questionnaire where the decision maker, which is me, will select the preference of his alternatives based on the scale we described earlier. Remember there were eight, 18 comparisons in total, 6 for the first matrix, and there are 3 comparisons for each of the following 4 matrices, corresponding to the analysis of the alternatives under each criteria. The third step of HP process is to compute and analyze the results. To do this, we first have to allocate the results in the comparison in the comparisons of the comparisons in a reciprocal matrix, just as the one we see here. Then we generate the agent vectors of each matrix and normalize the values. After that, we generate the maximum agent value of each matrix. Then we analyze the consistency of the matrix with the consistency ratio. And finally, we present and analyze the results. It is, important, it is important to describe that AHP is very concerned with the consistency of the results. To measure consistency, AHP applies what is called transitive property, which can be easily described with an example. Let's say A is more important than B, and B is more important than C. If you know this information, you can logically conclude that E has to be more important than C. Well, this is a transitive property. HP builds under this principle, but still allows the decision maker to be slightly inconsistent as, as it is an inherent property of human beings. Given the complexity of these steps, we will move to an Excel spreadsheet to explain with detail the mathematics behind this process. In chart number one, in chart number one, you can see the comparison matrix. Here, the first step is to complete the matrix by filling the cells in pink color according to the results of the comparison questionnaire. For the first space, which compares between flexibility and opportunity, I decided that opportunity is more important and gave a level of intensity of 8, so I write 1 over 8 here. The next comparison in the chart is flexibility and reputation. And I decided that reputation is more important with an intensity of 5. So I write 1 over 5 here. As you can see, the cells in gray are automatically completed with the opposite value. So if opportunity is more important than flexibility by an intensity of 8, then the opposite cell is equal as 1 over 8, which is 0 0.125. This makes our chart a reciprocal matrix. After filling all the cells with the corresponding level of intensity, salary is more important than flexibility with a value of 4. Opportunity is more important than reputation with a value of 5. Opportunity is more important than salary with a value of 3. And finally, reputation is slightly more important than salary with a value of 2. You would then notice that the values of the rest of the charts, chart 2, chart 3, and chart 4, are automatically generated. We then move to chart 2, which generates the agent vector based on the comparison matrix. In fact, you can notice that the cells in white are the same as the above and that there are calculation, calculations for the columns of agent vector and normalization. The agent vector is generated by the geometric mean of all the values of the rows as you can see in the, in the formula. The agent vector for each criteria is needed and calculated. Then, we normalize the values so they can be seen as percentages. The normalized value is generated by dividing each agent vector, for example flexibility, by the sum of all the agent vectors, as you can see in the formula. 
the normalized agent vector is called priority vector. As you can notice, the sum of all priority vectors is 1. The priority vector is very important because they represent the, the corresponding weight or percentage for each criteria. Here, opportunity is the most important criteria with a percentage of 58. And flexibility is the least important criteria with a percentage of almost 5. Next, we move to chart 3, which is the basis for calculating consistency in AHP. The aging values of each criteria are obtained by multiplying the priority vector, or the normalized value above, by the sum of values corresponding to that same criteria. Please notice the formula here. Then, we calculate the maximum agent value, simply by adding the obtained agent values. Finally, we move to chart 4, where the consistency ratio is generated. First, the consistency index is generated by applying this formula. Maximum agent value from above, minus n, divided by n minus 1. In our case, n is 4, as there are 4 criteria. So this is the result. Next, the consistency ratio is, is generated simply by dividing the consistency index by the corresponding value of a random consistency index. This last random uh, consistency index was derived by Professor Sati from a, a sample size of 500 of a randomly generated reciprocal matrix using AHP scales, a scale that goes from 1 over 9 going until 1 in the center, all the way until 9. This is the same scale previously presented. If the consistency ratio is below 0 0.1, then the calculations are accepted. And if the consistency ratio is above 0 0.1, it is recommended for the decision maker to reconsider his or her judgments. In our case, the consistency ratio is accepted. Then, the same principles and process is applied to the rest of the matrices, but, but since we have created a template, we just need to input the results of the pairwise comparison questionnaire in the, in the pairwise comparison matrix above, and all the results will be generated. This is how they look once completed. Finally, we move to the next cheat of our Excel template and you will see the synthesized results, which will allow me make a more rationalized decision. First, you can see the weight of each criteria uh, on the second level of our decision problem model. Here, opportunity is the most important one with a 58%. Then, you can see the weights of all my alternatives according to each criteria. For instance, the digital agency is the one with the highest flexibility. The global company provides, provides the highest opportunities. The global company provides the highest reputation. And the global company provides the highest salaries. So based on all the results, you can see the global weights of the alternatives, which are generated by the sum of multiplying the weights of the criteria by the weights of the alternatives, as you can see in this formula here. Results show that I would value more selecting the job offer at the global company. With all this, we have completed our AHP example and believe you're now capable of building your own calculations. Since AHP is well recognized and accepted, you will see there's a lot of material and resources available online that can help you with the calculations. We hope this video is valuable for your work. Thank you.